Sanitary Committee recognized the fact that many of the thousand persons of Japanese ancestry who lined up on this corner along Venice Boulevard in April of 1942 had been living in Santa Monica before being forcibly removed. We appealed to the Santa Monica City Council in September 2016, and the council responded with a $5,000 donation to the VGEM. Here to represent the Santa Monica City Council, former mayor and current council member, Kevin McGowan. The city of Santa Monica is both proud and sobered to be part of this dedication today because as you just heard, many of our Santa Monica residents were forced onto buses at this intersection 75 years ago. I'm joined here today by another former mayor of Santa Monica, Tony Vasquez. <laughs> Tony and our current mayor, Ted Winterer, joined me in asking our Santa Monica City Council to contribute to this memorial. And I'm proud to say that the vote was unanimous to do so. Santa Monica is happy to be here with you in Venice for this day. You may know that in Santa Monica, we recently opened a new park named after George Ishihara. George Ishihara was an American hero in World War II who helped liberate the Nazi concentration camp at Dachau. George did that while his own family languished in an internment camp simply because they were Japanese American. It's a shameful past. We're here to help erase that with appreciation for diversity. You know, it was another ethnic group, not the Japanese Americans, who gave us the phrase, never again. And never again was for all my lifetime, a reminder of the grave wrongs that can happen when we avert our gaze and say, well, it wasn't us this time. Something frightening has happened since the Santa Monica City Council voted to support this memorial back in September. With the election of a president who seems not to understand that what makes America great is multiculturalism, that phrase, never again, must for us become more than a reminder. In 2017, the 75th anniversary of the grave injustice to Japanese Americans that happened on this very street corner Never again is not just a reminder, folks. It has to be a rallying cry. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. In March 2012, the U.S. Department of the Interior announced the VGEM Committee as a recipient of the National Park Service Japanese American Confinement Sites Grant. The two to one net matching reimbursable grant meant the VGEM committee had to raise $25,000 to receive $50,000. We did, thanks to all of your support, and we successfully extended the grant to June 2017, which was the final extension. The VGEM is historically connected to the National Park Service Manzanar National Historic Site because those 1,000 persons of Japanese ancestry got on buses from this corner and rode over four hours to Manzanar in Inyo County, and to the tar paper barracks that would be their home for over three years for the duration of World War II. Here to re represent the Manzanar National Historic Site, Cultural Resources Program Manager and Archaeologist, Jeff Burton. Greetings and congratulations from the superintendent and staff at Manzanar National Historic Site, where the 48th Manzanar pilgrimage will be held this Saturday. When I started working on an overview of confinement sites 24 years ago, few of the major sites were recognized, let alone street corners where Japanese Americans had to assemble. So I'm grateful to be here today at this dedication. This shameful episode of American history needs to be told wherever possible. At Manzanar, we try to educate visitors about the background of the incarceration, and we try to show a little of life was like there for the prisoners, how they endured, and how they built gardens of hope. This monument tells a different and critical part of the story. People didn't just show up at Manzanar from nowhere. They were torn from their homes, schools, businesses, and communities. People will encounter this monument while going about their business, headed to work or to school or shopping or to the beach. They will read it, voluntarily interrupting their lives for two or five or 10 minutes. They will learn how in 1942, 120,000 people had their lives interrupted right as they were going about their business and not voluntarily, but by force and not for a few 
minutes, but for years. At Manzanar, the U.S. government admits it made a mistake. At this monument, we implore present and future generations not to make that same mistake. At this time, let us recognize and express appreciation to the Venice Community Housing Corporation, the nonprofit that serves as VGM's fiscal sponsor. Without this fiscal sponsorship, the VGM committee could not have qualified for the Japanese American Confinement Sites grant. Please stand and wave to the audience. Retired Executive Director Steve Clare, current Executive Director Becky Dennison, and Controller Priscilla Smith. We could not have completed all the interim budget reports for the Jack Scrat without Priscilla's expertise. Thank you, Venice Community Housing. <laughs> Dr. Jimmy Hara was born in Camp Gila in Arizona and has made his career practicing and teaching medicine at Kaiser Permanente, UCLA, and Charles Drew University. His avocation brings him into the orbit of actor and activist George Takei and full circle to 9-11. They are close to their goal of gathering 330,000 signatures on George Chakay's petition, Stand Up for Muslims in the U.S., Dr. Hara. Parenthetically, I also have a tie with Venice in, to the extent that I've been a volunteer at Venice Family Clinic for the last 45 years. And I was a resident in Santa Monica for 25 years as well. <laughs> um, Phyllis has already mentioned the fact that I've uh, had the honor of uh, joining George uh, Takei. Uh, in fact, at City Hall, he had a presentation uh, where the mayor also was present, uh, where he reminded everyone that um, you know February 19, um, 1942, uh, Executive Order 9066 was. Uh, was executed by um, FDR, and a similar executive order was uh, issued by uh, our current president, uh, wanting all of the Muslims to be registered, and um, and that basically we're talking about a situation where a, a single group is now being identified, and I'm happy to say that there's a petition that Caratu has passed around that a third of a million uh, individuals have, uh, have been signatories for. So just like the Japanese were singled out, uh, at a time, interestingly, that many of the governors and many of the mayors of major cities were either Italian or German descent. And it was only the Japanese who were relocated. So once again, I am so honored uh, to be here just to indicate that just like uh, Zev Yaroslavsky reminded us, uh, you know, there are different situations that remind us that we don't want history to repeat itself. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Dr. Hara. Dr. Tom Thomas Yoshikawa was one year old when he and his family lined up at this corner. They didn't know where they were going or how long they would have to stay. The camp experience had a tremendous impact on his parents, Dr. Yoshikawa recalls. He even felt like the enemy while in junior high school while studying U.S. history during World War II. Dr. Yoshikawa has taken those family and personal feelings to heart and empathizes with his public hospital patients who are often poor, unwelcomed, and disabled. Dr. Thomas Yoshikawa. Thank you very much. Since I have two minutes, I'm throwing out my prepared statements. Just to give you some sense of uh, what I, my father farmed right down here, about a mile from here on Edgemar Farm Mill Company, if you remember. And uh, he had about seven to 10 days to sell all his personal belongings, farm equipment. And we were obviously, you know, we were transported from here to Santa Anita Racetrack, where we lived in horse stalls for about three months. And then from there, we went to the camp. And just to give you some sense, camp life wasn't great, wasn't bad, but there were incidents that people do not know about. Let me just tell you one incident so you have some sense. There, were a, there was a period of time when sugar was a very important uh, food product, and camp people should have gotten their allocation. They were not getting the sugar rationing, 
So they found out that the management was stealing sugar from them. There was then a massive rebellion amongst the camp members, internees, and during that period of time that when the rebellion occurred, one of the uh, guards, as they were rebelling, shot a, a camp member in the back. And what happened is that they tried to coerce the camp doctor to say that the, this person was shot in the front. Okay. I bring that up because these are incidents that you never hear about and these things occur under these conditions. And so the important point of uh, this whole meeting is that we cannot tolerate these types of actions. Thank you very much.